please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government or med scholarships 2020. This problem is from the 2020 physics questionnaire for the undergraduate scholarships. The answer key and original questions are linked in the description. This is the continuation of the second section of the physics questionnaire. So we will be answering questions three to five. Now let's just read the problem again. As shown in figure two, two particles, each of charge Q, which is positive, are fixed at A and B. Again, the lower lowercase a is a positive number and this is in the xy plane the proportionality constant for the coulomb's law is denoted k then a particle with a charge negative q and a mass m is placed at c so here we add a particle and the charge is negative q and mass is m now we need to find the magnitude of the force acting on the particle at c the particle at C starts to move from rest and passes through the origin. O. Find the speed of the particle at point O. When the particle at C has an initial speed V sub O in the negative y direction, so going this direction, it escapes from the influence of the Coulomb forces from the particles at A and B. And moves to infinity. Find the minimum value of V sub O. There will be three concepts that will be useful in this problem. First is the definition of electric field. So electric field is actually defined as that vector field such that when you multiply it with a test charge Q you get the force acting on that test charge. And the force is defined as the mass times the acceleration. So dvdt here is the acceleration, v is the velocity or the velocity. And this is from Newton's second law. And then we also need to think about the escape speed. And this is the speed at which the kinetic energy is greater than or equal to the potential energy. So that's the minimum energy so we need to find that minimum kinetic energy that will be greater than or equal to the potential energy so minimum means they are equal because anything greater than that is acceptable now let's first find the magnitude of the force acting on the particle c in here so again we use this relationship here so the force is just the electric field times the charge Q. So the charge in the problem is given to be negative Q and the electric field, we can find it from the answer of the, of the first problem in this section. So there we saw that the electric field is KQ over square root of two times A squared. And if we just multiply that with this negative Q, and we get the absolute value because we're looking for the magnitude. We see that this is the expression here. And then we simplify that, we get this. So we just replace this with this and negative Q, the absolute value of that is just Q. So the correct answer would be this. Now, this fourth problem is a little bit more difficult because it wants us to find the speed of the particle at the origin. So the particle starts to move downwards and then it passes through the origin and we wanna find the speed there. Now, this is a little bit difficult because we know that the force, the force here, it is dependent on the electric field and the electric field depends on the position, right? So if you're here, you have an electric field that is different from when you are here. So the electric field depends on the position of the charge. And so that means your force also depends on the position of your charge. And actually what that means is that your acceleration is dependent on the position of the charge. So 
normally, so in, in most introductory physics courses, the, the acceleration is usually constant. And so we have ready-made formulas for when the acceleration is constant. But in this case, the acceleration is changing depending on the position. So we need to do, we, we need to do it from scratch. We need to, to do some integration here. So first we write, this is the, this is the, the equation here, four. So we just replace force with this bit here, m dv dt. And now we know that the electric field, we know this from problem, from, from the previous problems that this is just two times the vertical component here. And then the Q here is just negative Q and then dv dt because it's just moving along the y direction, we can replace it with dv sub y dt. And again, this is dependent on the position of, of, the, of the object, of the particle. That's why we just put here uh, y dependence to make it clear. And again, electric field is dependent on y. Now we have to recompute the electric field. So that electric field, we know that that is just 2kq in here, but now the distance, so here we have, we need the distance from the particle to the charge A and the charge B. So because the particle is moving, we need to, to have a changing distance as well. So that distance is just this horizontal distance. So this horizontal distance is fine because it's, it's just A all the time. A, so we have an A squared here. But the vertical distance is changing because the particle is moving from here, 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 here. So that distance from the particle to there is just y. That's why we have y squared here. So this whole expression here, square root of a squared plus y squared, this is the distance from the particle to the charge a. Okay, And it's changing depending on where the particle is. And again, we... we we put here the distance of that of that particle to particle A and particle B, and here we have y because because this is originally y minus the y coordinate of A and B, and the y coordinate of A and B is just zero. So y y is here. Y minus zero is just y. So we're left with this. That's for the electric field. For the negative q, we just put negative q. M is M. And now here we try to express this in terms of dy. So dv sub y dy instead of dt. But from calculus, we know that if we express that in terms of y here, we need to multiply it with another dy dt here. So this whole term here, this whole product here is equal to this single derivative. That's from calculus. Now, if we just simplify all of these, we see that the denominator will be this expression cubed because you have two here and you have one here. And then we collect 2k negative q and 2kq negative q, so 2kq squared, and then y in here. And then we notice that this dy dt is actually velocity in y. So this is just v sub y. So we replace that with here, with v sub y in here. And so this will be the expression that we need to solve. Now let's do the integration. Here I just copied the expression we obtained from the previous slide. Now we do here the integration. Here we integrate this side with respect to v sub y and this side we integrate with respect to y. So dy dv sub y and then we moved the m here to here. Now this constant can be taken out of the integral symbol. And here we have a pretty straightforward integral. Just make sure we have the limits properly. So it's from v sub y of a to v sub y of zero. So a again is here, zero is here. So we're moving from here to here. So we're integrating from a to zero. And on this side, because we're integrating with respect to y, we have y equals a to y equals zero. That's why we have a to zero in there. And here we have to do a bit of substitution to do this integral. We use u 
equals a squared plus y squared. So a squared plus y squared is this part of the denominator. And if we use the substitution, we get this du equals 2y dy. Now notice that du here is 2y dy, so it is twice this bit. So we can replace this with one half of du. So, you know, so this one goes here. We have one half of du equals this bit. And so the integral becomes like this. Again, this constant goes out. And now we replace y dy with one half of this, which is one half du. And the denominator is replaced with u to the three halves. Now the limits of integration becomes u of a to u of zero. So that's for the left side. On the right side, it's pretty easy. So the integral of v sub y is just one half v y v sub y squared. And we just make sure that the limits are properly written. So this these are the limits again. And so if we evaluate them, v sub y of zero is what we're looking for because that's the that's the speed here. That's a, that's the speed that we're looking for, the speed at the origin. V sub y of a is the speed at a, but we know that it, it moves from rest. So it is at rest at a. So this expression here evaluates to zero, this v sub y of a. And also the one half here and the one half here, they cancel. Then we carry on with the integral. So now we just did a bit of housekeeping. We moved the square of v sub y to this side because this is what we're looking for. And then we actually integrate this bit. So the integral of this is this, this whole chunk here. And we see that the negative signs here cancel and the two here. So one over one half of two, that's just two. So we get two twos in the numerator. And this is what we get. And here, this bit here is when we try to evaluate this expression here. So one over the square root of u. And it's evaluated from u of a to u of zero. So u of zero here, we just replace y here with the zero. And that becomes a squared plus zero, so that's just a squared, and so that becomes a squared here. Now u of a, we replace y with a, so u of a becomes a squared plus a squared, so that's two a squared. Now we can factor out this bit here because this is just a, the square root of a squared is a, and this is also square root of two times a, so a can be factored out here, and we can combine these two terms. Now when we do that, we see that we have a denominator of square root of 2, and in the numerator we get square root of 2 minus 1. And we do a bit of, of algebra there, so the square root of 2 here can be cancelled, and now one of these will be square root of 2, so let's say this becomes square root of 2, then we, we distribute it inside, so square root of 2 times square root of 2, we get 2 square root of 2 times 1, we get square root of 2, and the 2 here remains. And so that's how we obtain this expression here. And again, this is the square of v sub y of 0. And we're interested in that because this is the speed of the particle at the origin. And this is, this is the square of the expression that we're looking for. So to get the actual thing that we're looking for, we just get the square root of this expression. And that is this bit of the of the choices. Now let's look for the escape speed of the particle. And that is when the kinetic energy is equal to the potential energy. And we can get the minimum of that by using the equal sign here. So the kinetic energy is equal to the potential energy. We put the absolute value symbols here because often we denote PE or the potential energy with a negative value. But in this case, we, we are looking at their magnitudes. And so we start with the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy of this 
of this particle here at C, so at the beginning here at C, the kinetic energy is one half mass times the square of the speed. And it is given that the speed here would be V naught. So we put that the speed there. So that's the speed that we're looking for. And again, here, the potential energy is just the electric potential times the charge at C. So the electric potential is just V and the charge is given to be negative Q. And we've already computed V in a previous problem. So that's problem two, two. So let's just use the value there and plug it in here. So we get V equals the square root of two KQ over A. Then we use this equality. This is the equation that we, that we want to solve for V naught. And if we just move around some of the variables, we can solve for the square root or rather the square of V naught. So M here just goes here and two here goes up here. Now we are looking for V naught. So we just get the square root of the whole thing. We see that what we're looking for is actually this bit. If you learned something new today, please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya!